I have been so excited for another sit down conversation with Pine to Pink's Keith Fenimore, except this time we're not talking about Pine to Pink. We have a brand new initiative. Um, I'm so excited to be here in the Kin Wellness and Support Center. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for coming. What guided you from Pine to Pink? What really inspired you to take on this tremendous cause? I had nothing to do with it. It was, <laughs> it was Corinne Sakura. Uh, Corinne uh, had a, a vision for an all-inclusive wellness and support center in Bucks County that was free and that would cater to Bucks County cancer patients in treatment and recovery. And um, toward the end of her life, um, she explained that vision to her friend um, Alyssa Walloff. And Alyssa DM'd me on social media and, and said, um, you know, Corinne asked if I could get this information to the people that ran Pine the Pink because they seemed to be able to get things done. And I had never met Corinne. Um, and I got this message and we uh, very quickly decided that it was a necessity, that we would like to help the vision be realized. And, uh, and off we went. So many people have such beautiful stories to tell about the life of Corinne Sakura and the legacy that she's left behind. What about Corinne was most inspiring to you? I just think the selflessness, you know, to be put in the situation that she was in, having been battling brain cancer, breast cancer during her brain cancer um, as well, and then to be thinking about how she could improve the lives of other people in the community, you know, that's, that's off the charts. You know, that, that's, that's a special person. So, um, you know, this center was inspired by her and the idea behind it is uh, we want it to be zero barrier to entry um, for anyone in need of integrative services of support um, therapy or fitness to have a central spot in Bucks County where they can come um, and get those needs served emotionally phys physically socially in our last conversation, you had started telling us about the great things that Main Street Missions had in store for 2022. And here we are just a few months later and we're sitting in the building. What more can you tell us about this nonprofit? Yeah, so Main Street Missions uh, was created to, to oversee and run um, the Kin Wellness and Support Center. So as, as, a, um, as a group, it, it operates as a 501c3 uh, and this center is completely 100% donation based. So we, we, we uh, strive and survive, as I say, off of donations from the community. And um, yeah, so the nonprofit just gives us the freedom to provide, um, you know, the services that we that we can here at uh, at Kin, um, and and be recognized as a 501c3. And December 8th, we started onboarding patients. And right now, where we sit, we have um, close to 50 patients onboarded, 30 practitioners that are donating their time to treat those patients. Um, and so, yeah, came a long way in a short time. Yes, it did. Wow. Um, so one thing that I love about this center, it's not medical. So no one is coming here for their treatment. They're still going to their hospitals, to their oncologists, and they're getting what they need there. But tell us a little bit more about the, the support and the wellness opportunities that they have with these different specialists you're referring to. Yeah, um, that was a big deal for us. It was a big deal uh, for Corinne, uh, a non-medical, warm, comfortable, environment where you could um, kind of come to get out of your home and out of your head. The way the Kin's designed is you walk into a very uh, welcoming and warm uh, welcome center and uh, the one half is kind of a, more of a tranquil area where we have a living room, a kitchen which is the epicenter of, of, of Kin and then four practitioners rooms. Um, one designated to therapy, one designated to uh, massage, and then another one that does acupuncture and chiropractic services and another one that does reflexology and, um, and Reiki and light and sound therapy. Then the other half of the center, there's going to be a library and research center. There's going to be a, a large meeting room for support groups, uh, up to 25 to 30 people we can hold in that space. And then there's a proper yoga fitness studio with a wood floor, a bar on the wall, mirrors and two um, you know, windows for, for natural light. And then. We're building uh, some outdoor stuff with indigenous ingenuities and you'll have access through the center uh, to a back patio area to sit, sit and, and, and a labyrinth. The other thing we're doing with our kitchen is we're having local chefs paired with dietitians, 
and were shopping for the organic food that, they're, that they would prepare in a demonstration at Organins, who's, who, who are giving the food for free. They'll make the meal and talk about the benefits of the meal during the, the demonstration, and then everyone gets the raw materials to then take home and replicate the meal at their house. Um, we're also open, I should say, to the patient, which we are calling our guest, and their family and caregivers. So if, if a group wants to come, as in a husband, wife, or sister, brother, uh, or, or any combination there, uh, to take advantage of fitness or support, they can come together and do that. And then support and therapy, we have multiple therapists who will be here to meet with people one-on-one -on -one or one to, to, to a family, and support groups. And, uh, you know, the support groups are going to change in theme, but obviously just be here uh, for, for, um, for people to kind of intermingle and, and, and help each other. That's incredible. The opportunities for connection that you are providing with this center are going to be game changers for your guests that come to visit. No. What are you learning from your partnerships with the local hospitals and some of the oncologists that you're in connection with? Yeah, that's a great point. Thanks for bringing that up because we are, uh, I say, healthcare agnostic in that we're not um, uh, lining up with one particular hospital, but we're working with all of them. And already Fox Chase of Buckingham and Grandview are sponsors, and we're working on getting the other hospitals to join in on sponsoring uh, the center. Um, and we work closely with the social workers, with the nurse navigators, um, and with the oncologists. Um, the, the, the nice thing is they have our pamphlets in the onboarding process at the hospital, so people are learning about them when, when they're diagnosed, learning about us. So we know that the cancer diagnosis does not define the person, and it seems like the center is doing everything they can to, to treat the whole person, to take care of them and their caregivers. Yeah, that's it. I mean, uh, to help them uh, mentally, physically, socially, we're, we're not um, providing any sort of medical services um, uh, here. And, and I think our, our, if we can help people reduce anxiety, um, and help them get centered, uh, I think we've succeeded. So nearly all of us have been impacted by cancer in our families or personally, and I know that a lot of people are really going to want to commit to this great cause. How can we all get involved? So I guess if you're, um, if you're a patient, which we call guests here, and you're newly diagnosed or going through treatment and recovery and you want to come here, it's as simple as a phone call or an email to us. We send you some uh, basic paperwork for onboarding and, and in you go. There, there's, there's no barrier to entry here. It doesn't matter what insurance you have. It doesn't matter where you're being treated. Everybody is, that's in Bucks County is welcome or if you're outside of Bucks County but treated in Bucks, you're also welcome, as is your family. Um, and then as far as people giving, you know, uh, uh, someone said, uh, Helen Brown spoke at an event and she said, everyone has time, um, talent, or treasure. To give and I love that line and uh, since we are 100% donation based um, any help uh, is appreciated and, 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 and we could use so anyone who wants to get involved from a volunteer standpoint from an expert standpoint as a practitioner or, or a fitness uh, person or a therapist um, they can get in touch and then of course uh, down the road as we're moving and getting into fundraisers and things like that that we're going to have and events we're going to need volunteers and, and help and we're also need volunteers to, to be at the center to help as greeters and that sort of thing. So there's no shortage of opportunities for people to help at KIN uh, and everyone's well. Love that so much that it's 100% community based. That's it. Love that. So um, thank you so much, Keith, for giving us a tour of this amazing center. I feel like we get this glimpse into all that is to come in 2022. I can't wait to come back and visit and see people sitting in the chairs, enjoying their cups of tea and relaxing with a massage therapist. That's going to be so heartwarming. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Thank you for shining a light on Kim.